Welcome to another day in the matrix, waters above crypto. I'm sending you all love and high vibrations. Today we're going to dive into the Bitcoin and XRP charts to discuss what I'm expecting in the immediate short term over the next 48 hours, anticipating a correction leading into this month's full moon on September 20th. And I have a quick Amatria decode to share as well. I see the next 10 days being very exciting in this crypto market for those who've been following my work. The waters above wolves have been prepared for these moments for weeks and sometimes even months ahead of time, as well. I see the next 10 days being very confusing for the average investor. Two bull traps in a row can really shake out the overall sentiment of the market, and that's why it's great to be aware of Gamatria and how to read the charts without letting emotions get in the way, so you can be patient in the day-to-day -day and prepare yourself for big swings in the market before it happens. So if you're new here, we do cryptocurrency technical analysis and combine it with Gamatria, numerology, and astrology to understand these markets. Feel free to subscribe and turn on the bell notification to stay updated on when new videos come out. Make sure to give this video a like and share this channel with other conscious people to help grow this community. And for those of you who want to learn how to do technical analysis and combine it with Gamatria, you can join my mastermind course. My email is in the description box to get in contact with me for access to the course. And with that being said, let's take the red pill. So let's just start with some numerology gematria and have a little bit of fun. So today is the date of the 16th of September, and this gives us the 9-16-2021, which is the 21 reduction. And this is really nice to see because this connection comes back to Saturn with the 21. We've been exposing this on a bunch of our videos. But more importantly, I was discussing this date's importance because it is Yom Kippur. And these... Jewish holidays have been playing a very significant role in not only my work, but in the energy of the market. So I've been discussing Rosh Hashanah now for a very long time, and we saw that on the day of Rosh Hashanah, which was September 7th, we had a major correction. And I was telling everyone to just kind of be calm. We were prepared for that months in advance. And now we're sort of just seeing a very confusing time in the market where we've seen the market over the last couple of days be very bullish. And it's kind of been a little bullish too fast. So I was talking about this date to be significant because of that potential holiday and then also we have the day after which will be tomorrow and how this is sort of the start of an energy reversal so let's discuss this a little more so we have today being the 9 16 apologies there and we have this date tomorrow coming back to the 22 and this 22 has a lot to do with reset so we have the 22 is obviously a master number it can't be reduced anymore and that 22 shows up in reset in the full reduction it's really important that we consider this because we've been seeing this 21 and 22 date numerology create change in the market again and we always typically have our full moon near the end of the month around the 20th 21st 22nd of every month so this is really powerful and again Yom Kippur giving us this 99 and 45 and that 99 and 45 connection comes back to Jupiter with the 99 45 and as well today is Thursday Thor's day the day of Jupiter it's a very powerful day and I suspect this will be a very confusing day for the market as a whole that includes the stock market and the and Forex so Again, another thing to consider is that we're also in the 37th week of the year, and one way of interpreting this would be three sevens. So three sevens giving us the 777, and that comes back to 21. And that 21, again, shows right back up in today's date numerology, the day of Yom Kippur. And then also on the day of Rosh Hashanah, which is the start of Shemitah, we have the 21, okay? And this 21 keeps coming back to Saturn. Again, we're in the 21st year of the 21st century. So when we saw this transition into the year of 2021, the crypto market went crazy. I'm sure a lot of you remember that. Now, what we are seeing again in the market is some similar energy where it's just lots of, uh, let's just say lots of liquidity flooding into these altcoins and some of them are even hitting new all-time highs. It shows you the power of Rosh Hashanah and Shemitah and also on the other side of things we've seen major pullbacks in the market for the regular indices. So 
Let's consider that 777 again coming back to the 21 because it is the 37th week of the year, the three sevens coming back to uh, coming back to Saturn. And then also we have the upcoming full moon, which is on September 20th. And I'm really interested with the day before giving us the one uh, the 919-2021, and this gives us that 24, and that 24 is powerful because this date will actually be on a Sunday, and that day is the day of Helios, giving us that 24 in Chaldean. So, really powerful stuff. Also, that 68, coming back to reset, very powerful. We could see how all these numbers come together. So another uh, consideration here for this date of 9-19-2021, which will be the day before the full moon, we have it added up as such. 9 plus 1, 9 plus 20 plus 21, giving us that 69. And that 69 is powerful because it comes back to this upcoming full moon's name. And again, harvest full moon the 69 that'll be the transition date this date added up as 9 plus 19 plus 2021 giving us the 69 transitioning into the harvest full moon with the 69 and of course again we have this 204 which in the rules of numerology would be removing the zero giving you the 24 that 24 we just showed you before coming back to helios the day before that date added up 919-2021, the 24. Very powerful. Also, we have the English ordinal as the 201. You remove that zero, brings you back to the 21 using the rules of numerology. So that 21 again coming back to Saturn. So we have that 21 and 69 connection in Harvest Full Moon. It's all about Saturn, 20, 2169. They're right next to each other. Also in the Chaldean cipher, you have that 21 for Saturn, the most pure cipher. Very powerful. So with all things considered, I'm really interested in this date. Another thing is the 9 20 2021. This would give us the 16. This is the day of the full moon, and this 16 gets reduced down to 7. And the power of 7 this year, right? Because Shemitah is the seven year cycle. Every seven years from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah, we have what is considered. Shemitah, and this is the release. That's what it means in Hebrew. It means release, and this is the sabbatical year for agriculture, and it used to historically be all about agriculture. Now it's sort of financial, and we've seen this happen time and time again. Every Shemitah year, we have massive financial chaos, and it might be in one isolated market more than the other, but it's always happening. So we have the last Shemitah, which was 2014, 2015. It destroyed the Asian markets, and the Asian markets, predominantly China and Japan, are a huge powerhouse in the global economy as a whole, especially China on the logistics side of things and with e-commerce. We know that. And then we have seven years before that being that 2007-2008 housing market crisis, which also had banking scandals in Iceland, etc. It was massive. Uh, I remember reading about the island of Cyprus. There's crazy issues going on there with... Um, basically bank runs being attempted but the banks locking people out of their bank accounts it's insane go read about it that was all going on during 2007 2008 and then you have seven years before that you have the dot com bubble crash 9 11 and you could just continue going on and it's amazing how well this works been warning people about this since about april into may and it was one of the most um, pretty much groundbreaking pieces of of information i've come across and it was so great for me be, to be able to share it with people ahead of time to get people prepared. So why is this so important, this full moon? Well, again, Shemitah means release. It has to deal with the sabbatical year in agriculture and the 9-20-2021 date that's coming up. This full moon is called the harvest full moon. Harvest. Think about how perfectly planned this all was. It's amazing. They're even naming the full moons. And I understand that's on a cycle, but how ironic is it that this day that the harvest full moon is on reduces down to seven, where Shemitah is a seven-year cycle. There's a lot of sevens going on with this. Again, Shemitah started on the seventh day of this month, and Septa or September actually is a seven it shouldn't be the ninth month. It's actually seven because sept is seven sides. Septa 
is 7. So we have the date of Rosh Hashanah was actually 77. And if you measure the amount of days, if you put between Rosh Hashanah to these, this upcoming harvest full moon, that will be 14 days or two sevens. Another thing that's important is we're in the 77th anniversary of the Bretton Woods Conference. Lots of sevens. It's really powerful. So let's just let this play out. Again, we have tomorrow being the 17th. It will be the last transition out of, of sorry, Yom Kippur. And that transition out of Yom Kippur puts us into a new energetic cycle that leads us into the harvest full moon of Shemitah. So another thing we wanted to discuss is everyone's going crazy over HBAR, and I'm going to, I don't really care about coins that are going up, but what I do care about is exposing the Gematria code to help everyone figure out why the coins are doing what they're doing on specific days. So let's just quickly jump into that before I jump into the charts. So for one, we have the H bar pump that's been going on lately. It's entered price discovery. And you can see measuring from January 1st all the way to yesterday was 257 days. And the power of the number 257 because it is the 55th prime number. I warned you guys about this as well in regards to 55 showing up in Satoshi Nakamoto. Again, this 55 in the full reduction and the Chaldean cipher. Excuse me. Oh, I spelled that wrong, but it still ended up working out. <laughs> there you go. It gives you the 55 in Chaldean. So anyways, coming back to Hedera Hashgraph, we have the 257th day of the year being yesterday, and we can see that being the 55th prime, as you can read right there. And then we have Hedera Hashgraph also giving us that 55 in the Chaldean cipher. Hmm. How interesting is that, that also HBAR can't seem to really trade over 55 cents for too much time. So we have the 55th prime on the day of it hitting the 55 cent mark, and then it can't really trade for much more than a couple of minutes above that 55 cent level. How perfect is that, guys? It's amazing how this works, and I'll give you even more evidence into the power of this. So September 15th, which was yesterday, gives us the 9-15-2021, which comes back to 20, and then H-bar, the ticker symbol, and full reduction gives us the 20. Okay, and we could have anticipated this all happening actually ahead of time if you were interested in this coin because it has the 90, uh, the 79, and the 79 comes back to the Shemitah because we have 9 for September and 7 for the 7th day, which was the day of Rosh Hashanah, the start of Shemitah. So Rosh Hashanah giving us this big, powerful, sorry, I am spelling that wrong. Oh, never mind. So with that 57 connection that I was telling you all about when we were doing those decodes and that 57 being a very powerful number, the 56 and the 57 coming back to Society of Jesus. And of course, we get the 79 coming back to Hedera Hashgraph. We have that 57 tied back to Rosh Hashanah. And that 79, I'm so uh, glad I figured out this number and the power of it for this year because it ended up being the day of that correction that we got. So again, with Hedera Hashgraph having that, or sorry, H-bar, as you can see right here, having that 79 connection, it's pretty amazing how that all came to fruition. Again, also that 25, that 25 and H-bar connects it back to BTC. And of course, we have Hedera Hashgraph with the 55 in the Chaldean cipher, which returns it back to Satoshi Nakamoto, as you can see right here. Hedera Hashgraph's original logo, before it was the one it is now, was literally the logo of the Zodiac of Saturn. This is a Saturn coin. So anytime you have any connections to Saturn, this coin's going to do really well. And as you can see from basically the start of January 1st around the lows to where it is today has been almost a 1800% gain beautiful to see i wouldn't even be surprised if it moved up to 21 2100 percent again that 21 coming back to saturn just some food for thought <laughs> and let's move on to the analysis so hopefully you guys have been enjoying these videos where i start out with these longer decodes breaking down the code trying to help you all see what's going on in this market from another angle because again this is a very emotional market full of volatility lots of things going on lots of news lots of twitter and all this stuff and i really just want to lay that all to rest get you guys to be calm and just be patient because if you really enjoy all of these coins that are you know if you have a big portfolio 
portfolio and you're wondering why OneCoin is doing this on this day, you could use this code and, and figure it out pretty quickly on your own. And that's what I'm trying to teach everyone to be able to do it on their own. So let's get into the charts and explain why it's important what we're seeing today. And it all has to deal with the dollar index. If we're looking at this from a technical perspective, this is very beautiful. So we're on the daily chart on the DXY. And I'm going to look in particular at this day of September 3rd. And why? Well, it's because I actually made a post on Patreon. This was an exclusive post that I made on Patreon for the supporters of the Mastermind Community Membership. It was published on September 3rd, the day of this low right here. And now the day of that low, I actually told everyone that's the low. That's where we're going. And what we're going to do now is probably form a right shoulder. So this would be a textbook start of a head and shoulders pattern with a notable support level around here. If I had to draw a trend line, it would look something like this. So with Forex, trend lines actually work really well. So this, you can see this white trend line right here. It was holding a support, 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 fell through, and then it had two rejections, one rejection on August 11th, a secondary rejection on August 20th, and after that, this was a confirmed resistance. So we could actually remove this trend line now because we know it worked well, and then we came back down to this support line. You could see one touch point, two touch points. This would be the third touch point. So this is actually a, a confirmed trend line, three touches, and I rather focus on trend lines when I'm doing analysis on Forex, bonds, or, or the stock market indices i don't really love them when i'm doing crypto because crypto is extremely volatile and also extremely ritual at the same time so the learning the gematria numerology astrology is takes precedent over drawing a bunch of fucking lines on a chart <laughs> newer analysts love drawing lines on charts i don't get it but again i could kind of understand because a lot of the youtube videos show that anywho we have these three touch points confirmed trend line we have multiple rejections at the top side so what we are seeing right now again i made this post on the third i made it on the day of the low i told everyone in my community in patreon this was the day of the low and expect a move up into creating a right shoulder around the 20th of september and that level was around 93.2 if we're going to make it up that high that's about where i anticipate it to go we do see that there's a potential little trend line right here i mean it's basically 93.2. You can't really get much more perfect than that. So this level is something to watch out for. Anything up to 93 on a swipe, getting around this wick, this wick, or that wick, that would be pretty much where I, I suspect this to move up to. But another thing we could do, we actually have a textbook W breakout pattern. So we could see right here, we have the first V, then we have the second V with higher lows, sorta kinda, that's a pretty volatile wick, but this is a pretty clean W. Now what we could do is we could get this out of logarithmic scale and we will draw a line pretty much from the neckline down to the lows. I would rather do this on a closing basis on the four hour, but just for fun, we're gonna kind of play this one out and see where it goes. That goes to 93.3. So that would actually surpass the previous high in the structure right here, and that would go even higher. So if we were to go on a closing basis, which again is what I like to do, so any four hourly closure on the low, which I suspect is right there, boom. And then we would go from the closures on the high, which is perfectly right there as you can see closures closures and then if i move this up to exactly where those closures are that puts me at 93.1 right below the 93.2 level that i discussed in this if anyone thinks this isn't important right now wow that's really unfortunate because this is the kind of stuff that really helps people weeks in advance. I mean, we were able to determine this on the 3rd of September before the Shemitah even started, before the correction even started. And look at how perfectly it's playing out. So again, we are about four days away from the, from the date of the full moon, but it doesn't mean it'll stop there. We've seen the full moon energy be bearish in the market for up to five days, even sometimes 10 days after. But five days is about my window of time. So if if you're brand new here, you're unsure of what I'm talking about, I use the moon cycles of the new moon and the full moon to determine the energy of price, which that means that when we have a new moon, we typically get a bullish price for crypto and well, let's just say Bitcoin. And when we get a full moon, we typically get bearish prices. So what that means is the dollar index is a counter indicator. If the dollar is pumping towards a full moon that actually makes sense because when the dollar or the usd us dollar currency index is up 
that means everything else goes down. It's counter of that. So by being able to share this with people weeks in advance, it was like the crystal ball into what was to come for this September full moon. So glad I was able to share that with everyone. I'm really happy to be seeing this all play out. I'll leave this little white line here at around this measured move, and we're just going to see how it plays out over the next three to four days. And again, it could even go higher all the way till around 93 or so. I'm going to rewind the video to find that level. And we're seeing today it's obvious we're, what, what we're getting in this reaction to a green dxy we are seeing the stock market pulling back very ritual numbers here too you have that 444 and i've been seeing this uh, kind of resistance going on on the dow and it's definitely con concerning for some people but i don't want to talk too much about stocks because we're taking a while in this video so let's move on to the bitcoin chart really important stuff going on because we're starting to see a little bit of weakness let me turn off these drawings and get into the analysis so We've seen this pump up into the date of the 16th, which is today, sometime pretty late at night. And all this has created is essentially a lower high. Lower highs are bearish, guys. So we have multiple lower highs. We have them on the more macro side of things, which would be considering we have an all-time high up around 65,000. The current high that we're trying to break is 59.7. And then we've only gotten a local high of around 53. So this is a lower high, followed by another lower high. And these are essentially bull trap after bull trap. So I was warning people back in June and July, anticipate bull trap into late August, early September followed by a pullback and then what we're seeing now is the creation of a short-term Wyckoff move where we've had a big massive red candle this is called the selling climax at the bottom and then we move up into what's considered an automatic rally or an automatic reaction after that automatic reaction you essentially come down to trade around your previous trading levels which is anywhere between right here of 44.2 upwards of around 46 so I don't um know what really else to say about this at this time we kind of just need to let it play out but considering tomorrow is the 17th we've shown you all the numbers and then we have the full moon on the 20th we've seen time and time again every time we get a full moon and i'll show you the indicator we're pretty much moving down so i'm going to pull up the moon cycles right here and you could see we had on the two recent bot all three of the recent really low prices were all on full moons we had the price pump up here on June 15th around the new moon. Then we had really bullish energy moving into the new moon of August, followed by highs on the day of the new moon of September. So this is just a shakeout fake out. In my opinion, it's a secondary short term bull trap. Get people in longs thinking that we're just going to continue to the upside when in actuality, we're going to have to retest these lower levels. So the way that I'm looking at it, if I had to go on the super short term time frames, the one hour definitely seeing problems because we're getting a bearish divergence on the RSI price action than we're seeing on the three hour. Definitely, we've started a bearish cross on the MACD, which will bleed into the four hour. Once we start seeing the four hour give in with the MACD bearish cross, I would suspect any four hour closure on new lows, meaning anything below this 47,300, any closures on new lows in this structure would indicate a downtrend in my opinion, and the start of a correction further to the downside. Now, where do we go? How low do we go? Well, we just have to see how we hold support because we have the 21 exponential moving average, which is sitting around 47,200. Any closures below the 21 exponential, you suspect continuation to the next level, which would be around the 34. Again, we could also bring up our fibs, and our fibs tell me that the 0.5 Fibonacci level is sitting around 46,800. That would be the next obvious level to the downside. And we've actually traded around that level for the past week or so. So it doesn't matter if we trade below it or not necessarily. This is most likely going to trade into a W pattern. So I'm going to show you what that means on a clean chart. And on that chart i'm going to be able to help you guys see what's going on here so let me turn off these indicators and i'm going to draw out what's most likely going to happen so this is the neckline of our w what we'll do is we'll pl we'll place a ray there right here at that level because it's crypto we could be more volatile and put it at the wick so any closures above 48.5 and i actually told the people in my patreon yesterday in the discord i told them if we get daily closures above 48.5 that's problematic <laughs> so it's beautiful that we came up literally to 48,499.99 like 
one of the best messages I've ever left in Discord. So definitely, if you guys are looking for exclusive updates, you want to, you know, you want to join our Discord because I'm more on the go there. I could easily update people. So this is probably the start of the neckline. And then what we're going to see is probably something like this. You know, if I had to suspect how it's going to play out, I'm not looking at the days. I don't really give a shit about the dates at this time while I'm drawing this out. I'm just showing you. This is most likely what we're going to do. Create a secondary V, most likely a higher low. And then after that, breaking of the neckline followed by a back test of the neckline would indicate continuation. And where do I suspect that continuation to start? The new moon of October. So we have some time to let this play out, okay? And if I had to show you a measured move, it would be simply by taking a trend line going from the neckline down to the current low in the structure. And then I'm going to move that on up to the neckline. And this shows me I would actually be creating a new high in the structure. And I would be trading into the 702 fib. So that would make a lot of sense to see something like this. After hitting the 702 fib, come down to the 618. And then really continue to new all-time highs by mid-October. So that's the play, guys. I'm going to keep it at that. And uh, let's just see how it shakes out again. Over the next 48 hours, I'm expecting volatility first and foremost because the DXY is having its problems. And then if I measure from this day of July 21st over to 58 days, that's tomorrow. And we've been seeing that every 56 to 58 days from a low in the structure gives us a micro cycle low. Now, this date that we had a huge liquidity wick is very reminiscent to this day right here of May 19th when we had the huge crash. So it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to make a lower low. It just means something around that level. Now, arguably, if I took from the day of uh, the 20th and I went over 56 days, that does put us around uh, opening price of 45. But I think we'll retest lower than that into the full moon. Again, it's all about patience right now. It's not about being perfect. It's just about being able to Figure out what the market gives you and how you're going to take action in the market. Again, if you didn't de-risk before the date of Rosh Hashanah and then you're trying to FOMO back in at these highs, you're probably going to get caught up in another bull trap. So you just got to be very careful. Don't chase green candles. Be calm and let the market come to you. So we're seeing on the XRP chart, we're really really suffering holding that 382 barely holding it we can see that this down sloping trend line has been something of a good uh trend line i suppose if you want to use them i'm not huge on them but i have noticed they work pretty well in some circumstances now we're sort of trading on the outside of this uh trend line and any closures i suspect below that 382 around a dollar four or just any wicks lower than the dollar two level we would suspect continuation to the downside but again this all follows bitcoin so we need to see bitcoin start to close dailies below the 21 exponential and then we'll start to see xrp lose strength so let's pull up some of our indicators and see what's going on. Mm. Yeah, we're seeing that we're already closing dailies for XRP. Let me turn off these drawings and make it more clear for you guys. You could already see we're closing dailies below the 21, the 13, and the 34 potentially today. That's not good. Okay, so we need to see how this one plays out. Let's go to the 12 hour and pull up our SMAs and see if we're going to get any bearish crosses. We already got the bearish cross. There you go. So you see right there on the 12 hour on the 9th, we got the bearish cross of the 8 simple and the 55 simple moving average. So what this is, tell oh, look at that perfect touch down to the 200 SMA on the 12 hour. So anyone who pays attention to XRP, get your 12 hour chart out, add your 200 exponential moving average. Apologies, what I said before. This 200 exponential is really solid. You could clearly see the wick came right down to that level. But anyways... Let's wrap this up. Essentially, we're seeing the bearish cross come in of the 8 below the 55. Now, once we see that on the daily, which could be coming soon for not only XRP, but also Bitcoin, this would indicate market reversal at the time. I've This is one of my favorite uh, forms of using moving averages. It's very rare. A lot of people don't even use the 8 or the 55, but again... 
The reason I'm using the 55, it comes back to what we were talking about with Saturn. Again, that 55th prime number, that 55 is a strong number, five fives. So this eight I use because it's a Fibonacci number. I really like the Fibonacci numbers. Of course, 55 is also a Fibonacci number. So let's just let this play out. We can tell that the dollar index is starting to overheat because it's moved up pretty quickly in a single day. Anytime it moves up 0.4% to 0.5 or more, we typically get ready for it to start reversing and because we're four days away from a full moon this is perfect we're watching this head and shoulders pattern play out nicely if it continues on a daily close today anything above uh, 92.7 it would be showing that it has bottomed out for now and it is ready to head up and the resistance level would be clear around 93.2 just keep that all in mind. That stuff's going to help you. And follow the Dow if you wanted to see if this is going to close minus 300 points on the day. That's another thing that could be a sign of basically once the market closes today, once the New York Stock Exchange closes, I would not be surprised if there was a lot of volatility entering Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies. So that'll be around 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I, I rarely follow stocks anymore. I'm more focused on crypto. So that's the play, guys. Again, tomorrow I'm anticipating that reset sort of energy moving out. I'm not calling for crashes. I'm not calling for crazy, you know, none of that. I'm just, I'm patient, calm, letting the charts come to me. Enjoy the rest of your day in the matrix. Much love.